morning, everyone. Today is Tuesday, October 4th. I'm Marv Eisen of Timeless Dollar Trading Academy. And the subject of my video today is how to make money trading S&P E-mini futures. Simple, right? Starting out today, as I do every day, I check the economic calendar to see if there are going to be any announcements during the day that are going to have the potential of moving the market. And today, October 4th, I'm going down the list and really nothing is there that's going to move the market. So I'm moving over to the morning news and flags are in the green. Interestingly enough, energy is up. The 10 year treasury is down slightly. So I don't think there are any, there are any surprises here other than the numbers are still what, what they've been over the past several months. Higher interest rates, higher energy prices and prices basically bouncing around in each of these two categories. Nevertheless, the market had a stellar day yesterday on Monday, October 3rd. And the news today is traders try to build on Monday's rally. Now we're into the last quarter of the year. And in the last quarter of the year, the brokerage firms do what is generally referred to as window dressing. Window dressing is the attempt by the brokerage houses to show their clients that they're in with the latest trends, they've been following the market, they're, tr they're making money, and they are deservant of their commissions. I don't think it's going to happen this year, but nevertheless, fourth quarter, window dressing. So the market is making um, uh, a, a bounce upward. Why? I don't know. It doesn't matter. We're day traders, and as day traders, we only look to see what happens during the day. But it's a mistake to think that day trading is a second by second or minute by minute endeavor. Uh, there is a combination of both. I'm going to take you over to my site, timelessdollar.com. I'm going to digress for a minute, so please bear with me. There's something here I want you to see. Down toward the middle of the page, this is the home page of my site, timelessdollar.com. There are several pieces of... Um, links, several links that you can open up, the mistake of overtrading, know the competition, not following the rules, yada, yada. But there's one thing here that I want to point out to you, know the competition. Okay. So remember the subject of this video is how to make money trading S&P E-mini futures. Okay. So I'm going to read this and just bear with me and let it sink in. Lots of trading schools exist, yet so many traders fail. The reason isn't the schools, it's the competition. The mistake is not realizing who you're trading against. And here's the unvarnished truth. This market wasn't created for you to make money. It was created for the big players to make money from you. For you to succeed, you need to know how to trade and know what the competition does to mislead you. Now, if you don't know, I have a free mini course with the subject of just with this subject. Know what the competition does to mislead you and how to avoid the mistakes and pitfalls that trap so many newbie traders and cause them to make uh, to lose money. So now that I've read that to you and thank you for bearing with me, I'm going to go over to the e mini and this is Monday, October 3rd. This is yesterday. And yesterday I made a very short video, probably the shortest video I've ever made. And I said, look, this is where the market is likely to trade on Monday. And I had this rectangle drawn out, this trading zone, and I have a, a horizontal line indicating uh, several pieces of information. The horizontal line is the close of the previous day. I always put this on my chart and I always put a rectangle on my chart to show me where the market is likely to trade. This rectangle is not a guess. It's based on arithmetic that is measurements of price movement throughout the previous several days. Measurements of points from lows to highs, from lows to lows, from highs to highs, and from highs to lows. And these are average, these are averaged out, and then the averages are averaged to arrive at just two numbers, a support number, and a resistance number. And I put this on my chart and this is the trading zone. And these numbers, and I'm not the only one that does this, my friends, these numbers are based on Taylor's trading technique. You can pick up the book on Amazon. 
If you can make uh, sense out of it, you're better than most because it's a very difficult book to read, let alone to know how to derive these numbers. But nevertheless, simple enough, right? So I put these numbers on my chart and I made a video yesterday, where is the market likely to trade? And I said, this is where the market is likely to trade. Now, the thing about trading, like anything else, is you need to know what you're doing. I know two things. I know the market is going to do whatever it's going to do. And I know my numbers are calculations. They're just calculations, but they're calculations based on not a guess, but real arithmetic based on what the market has done. In other words, it's a habit. It's, it's like a habit. You know people from habits. They have certain habits. And the market also exercises habits. So the market has a habit of moving in certain directions and moving in certain trends, and those directions can be measured. And I put these measurements on my chart, but I also know how to use them. And so this measurement, this trading zone, I know that it's not an absolute. Nothing about the market is absolute, right? So I know something else about the market in using this technique. Now, I know that the market, if you look at the market as a candle, like a one-day candle, right? It has a, a, a shadow at the bottom, has a shadow at the top, and it has a real body, okay? So you know this from your technical analysis, from your basic candlestick uh, reading. So candles form with a body and a shadow, top and bottom. And here's the thing. The market is going to start at one end most days and end up at, at another end. It's going to start here and end up down here. It's going to start here and end up up here. But it's usually going to end in the different, in the opposite end of where it starts. So I know that in applying my trading zone, I know that the market is going to move from a low to a high or a high to a low. And I know that the low or the high of the day, the intraday low or the intraday high, is going to be put in within the first half hour to hour of the trading session. So here, the intraday, here's how the prices tracked yesterday. And I'm not going to go to, to today because I make these numbers available as a subscription on my site, timelessdollar.com. I'm just go back there if you're interested. Um, E-mini courses, daily trading zone subscription. That's where you find it. So now back to my chart. I know that these these measurements have to be applied to the numbers. In other words, I'm going to fit the suit to the man. Okay, here's the man, the prices of the man. And I'm going to fit my measurements to the intraday high or low. So I wait for the first half hour to an hour and I assess where the most likely uh, intraday high or low is. Now, I could say that this is the intraday low. And of course, I could say this was the intraday high. So it's sort of like a guess. But nevertheless, I guess that the intraday low was the going to be the low of the day. And so I take my trading zone and I clone it. I basically copy it, okay? And I paste it and I match. And this is after the first, after I determine whether I have a high or a low on my chart. And I match where the intraday low or high is. And I move it up and I say, this is where the market is likely to trade for the day, okay? And this is big picture trading. This is long-term trading. This is not trading based on setups. Okay, this is long term trading, long term being almost a full day. So if I take a trade, if I take my measurement and I reset it or I transpose it, I and I'm let's say it's uh, 1130 and I'm, the market is trading up here. I have a pretty good idea that the high of the day is going to be up here at 3708. And so I say, well, you know, if I take a trade to the long side here at 3671, I'm going to make about uh, 40 points. Okay. So I take a trade, let it ride. I don't care about this. I set my, I set my stop somewhere down here, well out of the way of the volatility. And I close my, and I, and, and I walk away from my computer because I don't want to deal with the mental stress. Now this is going to work most of the time. And certainly not all the time. There are days that I can lose 20 points. All right. Uh, but I can, I can make a lot more. So Yesterday was good for 40 points for me, but nevertheless, the market was not made for us to make money. The market was made for the big boys to make money from us. So we have to know how to trade the big picture because in the little picture, you know, the market, they're going to take the market up and then they're going to drop it. They're going to take the market up to entice us to buy long, and then they're going to take it down after they grabbed uh, our, our 
uh, contract, and then they're going to go to where they want it to go in the first place. So I use my measurements for a longer term trade. And uh, that's how you make real money trading S&P E-mini futures. So that's my video. That's the subject. And that's how it's done. Or at least one way it can be done. If you want to learn how to trade S&P E-mini futures, both long term and short term. And I only use and teach six trade setups. You know that there are schools that teach hundreds of hundreds of trade setups and flags and pennants. And did you know that there are 200 different technical indicators? You can put 200 technical indicators on your chart. I use one, stochastics, because I don't really care. The numbers, I don't want to play with numbers. I want to make money and I want you to make money. And it ain't easy, my friends, but it's doable. This is Marv Eisen for Timeless Dollar. It's Monday, October 4th, Tuesday, October 4th, I'm sorry. You have a great day. Thanks so much for watching and bearing with me. Trade safely, use lots of patience, and I'll see you in my next video.